Hi, I'm Brett. Today we've got part two of our video update on the Spec C rally car. In our previous videos that you may want to have a look at, we spoke about what the car is looking like in the engine bay. Well, now we've got it back together. It's ready to go in the dyno. It's got a MoTeC ECU because this car runs any lag and we're custom tuning it to remove the restrictor, which we'll just uh, show you later on. But let's have a look at what the car looks like underneath. And you'll remember our last video, what we were doing, but let's have a talk about some of the things that makes a Spec C rather unique. And one of the biggest things is the exhaust manifold. And you'll notice it's got a, a relatively small sump, although its capacity is quite good compared to a factory standard uh, single scroll turbo engine. And you'll notice how the exhaust manifold comes out from the driver's side ports of the heads and then goes around and then collects actually in two pipes up here inside all this heat shielding and then has two pipes going up into the underside of the turbo and I'll show you what that looks like as a dismantled assembly in a few minutes and you'll notice the other side is fairly similar and that's what makes a spec C twin scroll turbo engine unique compared to a single scroll normal road car. Um, of course being a rally car it's got the sump um, guard here. We've removed the engine some guard, but this one protects the six-speed transmission. Now this car had a bit of an off in its last rally, so you notice it's got nice fresh aluminium front control arms. Um, being a, um, a rally car with gravel set up at the moment, still got the gravel brakes, so it's still got standard sway bars, and it's got st uh, standard tie rod ends. It's got the DBA uh, slotted front rotors on. You notice it's got the small brakes. It doesn't have the big um, big brakes that typically comes with an SDI because with a rally car you've got to run 15 inch wheels and of course you can't fit the big brake kit inside a 15 inch wheel but this will be all changed as the car upgrades to uh, tarmac spec at the moment and also this particular car has had the uh, white line rear control arm bush which is the anti lift kit bush fitted because the uh, original factory bush was uh, rather damaged um, in some of its use so as we progress down to the back you'll notice it's got a pretty uh, simple design exhaust system but one of the small things that a lot of people get my cameraman to come around behind me here you notice it's got a slip joint up the top here it doesn't run a flexible joint it actually runs a slip joint so this all here under load can actually move off the back of the turbo because this part here is the exhaust outlet from the uh, twin scroll turbo that then has got a slip joint here with those removable pegs that holds it in place so it's very easy to get it off in the middle of the rally if you have to now underneath the back here, it's interesting, the client, is the owner has taken them off, but originally this car has Kevlar underbody, and you'll notice just the little things here, it's got all these um, captive threaded fittings into the body to hold the Kevlar underbody onto the car, but as he prepares the car for tarmac rallies, looking at ways to get rid of weight, although there's a pretty good chance we'll probably put all that back on again, because the underside of this car for a gravel rally car is actually in very, very good condition, with the exception of some of this type of damage here, which is pretty typical, and you'll notice you know, gravel rally car gets a fair bit of a hiding underneath. Now, down the back, this is some of the stuff that you don't normally see. All the underbody protection and continues down here from the body, but this part here is the aluminium protection for the fuel tank. Running uh, the car that's set up, it doesn't have an FIA bladder tank in the back of the car. It still runs the original factory uh, fitted fuel tank, and these guards on either side are designed to protect it from impact damage. You can see this one here. The, the thickness of the aluminium and just took what it takes to puncture the aluminium here. If that was a fuel tank, he would have had a hole in his petrol tank with that type of damage. And that's the type of thing that we'll be removing these underguards and checking out, make sure there is no damage to the fuel tank. Um, again, being a Spec C rally car, it runs a, a rear diff. Now inside this diff will be a mechanical limited slip diff. Um, which gives a lot more drive and of course the six-speed transmission in the centre has got an electronic centre diff controlled by the MoTeC ECU and um, all those things take inputs from the handbrake, the clutch um, and the accelerator pedal depending on those inputs to lock and unlock the centre diff to make the car handle differently under braking and acceleration and cornering. Now around the back here you can see um, it's running a SDI rear sway bar on the car which was fitted back in New Zealand and the rear uh, gravel discs as well to fit the uh, setup to fit the uh, 15 inch wheels and you might be wondering well what's this part inside here and it's actually a scraper so when the wheels turn in this direction um, as you go sideways slowly um, in certain uh, certain gravel roads you get a lot of gravel moving sideways and gets inside the wheel and then as you accelerate it sits inside the wheel and the wheel gets out of balance and in fact in extreme situation it gets so badly out of balance you actually can't continue to accelerate the car because the car is just so violently having the wheels out of balance so what we do is we put these scrapers inside here which is designed 
to act exactly like that as a scraper to pull all the dirt out of the inside of the wheel. So therefore you don't have a wheel that gets out of balance. But you'll notice a little thing here. There's a polish mark on the inside of the wheel there, which is a bit different to the rest of the wheel, which indicates the wheel's got a bit of a bend in it because as it goes around past the scraper, being bent, it rubs on the scraper more than the rest of the wheel. So that's a dead giveaway that wheel is actually a bit, little bit buckled. But that's fairly typical again of a gravel rally car because of the damage and the hiding they cop. So I'll get around the back and you can see again it's fairly simple set up with the rear exhaust system. It's got a lot of these quick release fittings again on the back here so it's easy to remove the exhaust if you want to. And um, uh, you can see also now um, the rest of the suspension and just how big the rear um, suspension struts. And you've got to remember on the back it's not a McPherson strut, it's a Chapman strut. Um, because it has a guiding function but it doesn't actually rotate like the front McPherson strut and of course you can see all the protection that is in place to protect the rear brake lines against damage and all the rocks and stones that are in place when this car has been driven hard on the gravel. And just some of the other small things on the spec, so you'll notice these bushes up in here a little bit different design to the road car because on a rally car you don't really care about um, noise vehicle harshness. So these bushes in here are a lot harder. In some rally cars on the Ella models, actually a solid steel insert, whereas the road car had a rubber bush. And you'll also notice in the back here, there's no rubber bushes inside the brackets that support the rear diff either, whereas the, um, this hanger, which then is bolted to the inside here, has got a much stiffer bush than the factory road car. Because of course, when you're driving the car really hard, you don't care about the stuff moving around. And of course, these are the things that contribute to the road noise, which makes this type of car so much different on the road compared to a normal cushy, cushion um, bushed road car. So there you have it. That's the underside of a Spec C. What we'll talk about later is the uh, setup of the suspension. And then I'll show you a bit, so, a bit inside the, uh, the cabin because there's some pretty trick parts on this particular car having its history of where it was built and then we'll be getting it on the dyno and we'll show you what it looks like on the dyno. So check out our other videos on this particular car, but of course so follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram and we'll keep you in touch with um, our passion towards rallying and of course the uh, knowledge we get for working on the road car. So no matter where you are in the world, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.